Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 5th of March. India gives 1.4 million COVID jabs highest campaign tally in a day. US envoy Khalizad meets Afghan negotiators in Doha amid peace efforts. And Nepal PM Oli and Netra Bikram Chand led rebel group formalized truce agreement. And now for all the details. India has passed a key vaccination milestone with 1.4 million vaccine doses administered in the past 24 hours, highest in a day since the campaign began in mid-January, the country's health ministry said on Friday. India has so far given 18 million doses to about 15 million people. India administered 1.4 million vaccine doses in the past 24 hours. The country's health ministry data showed on Friday, the highest in a day since the campaign began in mid-January. India has so far given 18 million doses to about 15 million people. Several ministers and lawmakers have taken shots of COVID-19 vaccines in the second phase of the inoculation drive, which began on Monday. The country of 1.35 billion people still has to nearly double its current rate of vaccination to meet its target of covering 300 million people by August. The government has also roped in many private hospitals, allowing them to run vaccinations throughout the day and assuring there is no shortage of shots in the world's biggest vaccine-making country. The vaccination pace increased this week after Prime Minister Narendra Modi kicked off an expansion of the drive to include the elderly and those aged 45 to 59 suffering from medical conditions. India on Friday reported 16,838 new COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours, taking the total to 11.2 million. Deaths rose by 113 to 157,548 so far. Condemning the terrorists who seek to infiltrate across the line of control, the U.S. State Department has called on India and Pakistan to reduce tensions along the de facto border by returning to the 2003 ceasefire commitments. The comments came as India and Pakistan have agreed to strict observance of all agreements, understandings and ceasefiring along the line of control and all other sectors. Spokesperson to the U.S. State Department, Ned Price, while condemning the infiltration of terrorists across the line of control, has called for a reduction of tensions along the international border. Price informed that they are following the developments in Jammu and Kashmir closely and suggested both India and Pakistan should reduce tensions along the line of control. The comments came at a time when militaries of India and Pakistan have agreed to strict observance of all agreements, understandings and cease firing along the line of control and all other sectors. Um, we condemn terrorists who seek to infiltrate across the line of control. When it comes to how we will support that, um, we continue to support direct dialogue um, uh, between India and Pakistan on Kashmir and other areas of concern. Kashmir Valley has long been a flashpoint between India and Pakistan. But tensions were renewed after New Delhi withdrew the autonomy of Jammu and Kashmir state in 2019 and split it into two federally administered territories. India since then was accusing Pakistan of training and helping terrorists infiltrate across the border and mount attacks on Indian soil. However, Pakistan denied the allegations. Moving on. Activists have been highlighting persecution of innocent Baloch people by the Pakistani state and its army through a photo exhibition on the sidelines of the ongoing UNHRC session in Geneva. President of Baloch Voice Association, Munir Mengal, while raising concern over rising cases of enforced disappearances, blamed that there is worst kind of subjugation in Balochistan. 
Baloch activists have been highlighting persecution of Baloch people by Pakistan through a photo exhibition on the sidelines of the ongoing 46th session of the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva. Munir Mengel, the president of Baloch Voice Association France said that in Balochistan there is worst kind of subjugation as he expressed concerns over increasing human rights violations in the region. He highlighted the data collected from Balochistan shows 892 verified cases of enforced disappearances were reported in Balochistan in 2020, which is approximately 8% higher than 2019. In, in Balochistan, you, you will find worse kind of subjugation, worse kind of colonization. You cannot imagine how Pakistan army is brutally killing, abducting and keeping the people under subjugation. So there's not a one uh, area, one field where you can say that the, these are being treated as human beings. Activists blame there has been a sharp rise in human rights violations in Balochistan since the launch of the multi-billion China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC, which has only brought death and destruction for the local people instead of economic opportunities. And they accuse Pakistani security forces have been given a free hand to eliminate the voices against the illegal project. Pakistan is suspending its flagship cricket tournament that started last month after 17 personnel tested positive for COVID-19, the cricket board said on Thursday. Reports suggest that since the announcement of relaxation in restrictions by authorities late last month, the number of COVID-19 cases has gone up by around 30% in the country. The sixth edition of Pakistan Super League has been postponed due to the rising COVID-19 cases among the players and officials involved in the tournament, the Pakistan Cricket Board said on Thursday. The decision was made after seven team personnel tested positive for COVID-19, which had started on 20 February. Teams competing in the country's highest profile sporting event, in which international players also participate, were all present in the southern city of Karachi, where matches were being played. It was a great disappointment for us um, that we have found ourselves in a situation where neither us or, or others um, are able to um, provide what we need to provide, and that is the full protection for players. The health and well-being of all the players comes first and foremost above anything else. The Pakistan Medical Association, a representative body of health professionals, has urged the government to immediately impose the restrictions to avoid chances of a third wave of the virus. Since the announcement of relaxation in restrictions by the National Command and Operations Center NCOC late last month, the number of COVID-19 cases has gone up by around 30% in the country, reports suggest. Pakistan has so far recorded 587,014 cases of COVID-19 and over 13,000 deaths. There are 17,177 active cases of COVID-19 in the country. In news from Afghanistan, U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalizad met with the Afghan negotiators in Doha on Thursday and discussed the prospect of peace in Afghanistan and the way forward. Before arriving in Doha, the envoy concluded a three-day trip to Kabul where he met Afghan political leaders. The U.S. Special Envoy Zalmi Khalil Zad met with the negotiating team from the government's side upon arriving in Doha on Thursday. Taking to Twitter, an Afghan negotiator, Fazia Kufi, informed that she and other team members had a fruitful meeting with Khalil Zad on the prospect of peace and the way forward. She said the important role women and new generation can play through the process and post-peace agreement was also discussed during the meeting. Prior his trip to Doha, Khalilzad spent three days in Kabul where he met Afghan political leaders to discuss peace. Meanwhile, as the new US government is reviewing a 2020 agreement with the Taliban which called for foreign troops to withdraw by May 1 this year, Germany's foreign minister Heiko Maas has called on the international community to end the military mission in Afghanistan in a responsible way and avoid a premature withdrawal of foreign troops that might play into the hands of the Taliban. Moving on to news from Nepal. The Nepal government and Netra Bikram Chand-led Communist Party of Nepal on Friday 
formally signed a three-point agreement reached on Thursday amid a program in capital Kathmandu. The details of the agreement were made public at the formal program that was addressed by Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli and Netra Bikram Chand. Two years after imposing a ban on Chand Party's activities following two blasts in the capital, the Oli government lifted the ban on its activities after reaching a three-point deal. The agreement includes that the Communist Party of Nepal will resolve all their political issues through dialogue, conduct all their political activities in peaceful manner, and the government will resign all restrictions on CPN, release all arrested cadres, and release pending cases on the party. The deal was reached as Oli struggles to win political support following the Supreme Court's rejection of his abrupt decision to dissolve parliament and call early elections. The debilitating effects of the coronavirus pandemic are being observed in almost all sectors of Bangladesh's economy. The shipbuilding industry of Bangladesh, though flourishing, was also hit hard due to the pandemic. The sector is gradually returning to business amid easing of the COVID-19 situation in Bangladesh. With dozens of dockyards, Kirani Ganj in Bank of River Burigonga that flows past the southwest skirts of Bangladesh capital Dhaka is a mega hub for building and repairing small vessels, launches and steamers. The chaotic hustle and bustle of the area never sleeps with hundreds of workers dismantling the old ships and cruisers to reuse their parts and machinery in new vessels or repaired ones around the clock. The sector gradually returned to business in recent months amid easing of the COVID-19 situation in Bangladesh. Dockyard workers said due to coronavirus, the activities came to a near halt and workers suffered a lot. But now, everything is going on as usual. Bangladesh has so far reported 548,549 coronavirus cases and 8,435 deaths. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Thursday received a first dose of the AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine nearly a month after the country launched the nationwide COVID-19 vaccination drive with the jab manufactured by the Serum Institute of India. More than 518,000 people have taken their first doses of the vaccine. Hindu devotees gathered at the famous Ramanatha Swami temple in southern India on Thursday to mark the beginning of 12-day-long celebrations of Mahashivratri, the day of Lord Shiva's marriage to his consort, Goddess Parvati. Devout Hindus flocked to the famous Ramanatha Swami temple in India's southern Rameshwaram city on Thursday to mark the beginning of 12-day-long celebrations of Mahashivratri, the day of Lord Shiva's marriage to his consort goddess Parvati. The celebrations began with the annual flag hosting ceremony at the temple and offering prayers to Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction. According to popular belief, offering prayers at Ramanatha Swami temple washes away sins of a lifetime. <laughs> On Mahashivratri, devotees bathe in the holy rivers, offer fruits, flowers and milk to Shiva Linga, a phallus representation of Shiva, who is part of the trinity of gods in Hindu mythology. This year, the festival will be celebrated on March 11. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on South Asia News You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAJNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAJNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. 
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button